<laughs> I'm Wes Skogan, and me and Brian Skogan have been building a trebuchet. We've tested the swing using a 5 gallon pail of rocks weighing about 40 pounds. Composed mostly of untreated lumber, it weighs a total about 300 to 400 pounds. The height to the arm is about 22, 22 feet high. Um, I'll get back to you after we do a couple of test runs. Stop! 
the new reloading system consists of a block and tackle, which is made up of four pulleys, where one end is anchored at the base, and the other is attached about nine feet from the top of the arm. It is then pulled down and secured by a safety strap. The block and tackle is then set aside for later use, and then the pin is adjusted for throw. This thing is then anchored by an anchor pin at the end of the arm, and the other end is then looped around the release pin. It's then pulled tight and loaded. Disengage the safety strap. You're ready to launch. In three, two, one, launch. During one of our test launches, uh, our anchor pin broke, and we realized then that the release pin and the anchor pin, in fact, need to be switched around. That's why we do these tests. We chopped the split arm up and reinforced it with a three-foot piece of one-inch pipe. We also added a little touch of our own, an adjustable pin with a stronger anchor. Once it was finished, we hooked it up to the truck and had it all loaded and ready to go to the reunion where it was going to be the entertainment for the evening. But in my eagerness, I made one fatal mistake. I failed to strap the trebuchet to the trailer. I did not consider due to its height and its weight it would be susceptible to crosswinds and gravity. It fell off the trailer in about 60 miles an hour down the highway. I was crushed, but my dad provided me with some encouraging words that we could rebuild. And by salvaging what we could from the wreck, the only thing salvageable at the time was the pallet and the skid and about half of the arm. First maneuvered the pallet to the trailer, got that secured down. Mother brought home some lumber from the lumber yard. Tried to follow the same specs as we did on the original Thunderstruck. Started by drilling our one and a half inch holes into the uprights for the axle. We then secured those on with four inch torque screws. We began drilling our one and a half inch holes. We then gathered together the lumber that we're using for the arm. Got the holes drilled for that. Had to make those a little bit bigger so then the arm would be able to freely move around the axle. 
dad then gets the horizontal pieces in fixed in place for the 45 degree angle support beams. Those consist of about two 2x4s and a 2x10. The arm is then nailed and glued together. Then using leverage, we lift the arm into place. Measured our angles for 45 degree angle pieces. Used a pipe clamp to hold the uprights together. Got the uprights fixed into place. We then cut the holes for the angled uprights, which would be going alongside the vertical uprights. These would then slide over the axle for maximum support. Got those fixed into place with torque screws. The angle for the other uh, supports for the upright pieces. This would be pressed against the piece that goes around the pipe. We then fixed our reinforced adjustable pin on the end of the arm. This we also salvaged from the wreck. We then put the skid on. What you can't see is that we're actually putting new plastic on it. This plastic is actually uh, housing plastic, what you put underneath your siding. We then attach the anchor for the counterweight. Made our anchor for the block and tackle. And memorialized the Thunderstruck 1. Thunderstorm!